so this is problem 35 uh, from chapter 29. Uh, so we have a short section of wire of length A that is moving with velocity V parallel to a very long wire carrying a current I as shown in the figure. So let me reproduce the figure here. We have a very long wire that's carrying some current I and a short segment of wire okay, uh, of length A, I believe, yes, and of distance B. Uh, from the current carrying wire. Um, it is moving with some velocity v. Uh, the near end of wire is distance p from the long wire. Assuming that the vertical of wire is very long compared to a plus b. So the length of this wire is very, very long with respect to other length scales in the problem, meaning that we can essentially take this to be infinite. So we can use the uh, formulas that we know for an infinite current carrying wire. It produces a certain magnetic field. Uh, we are asked uh, to determine the EMF between the ends of the short section, assuming that uh, V is in the same direction as I, so it's going down, uh, as I drawn here, or in the opposite direction to I, so uh, going up, or perhaps the direction of the current has changed. Okay. So if this wire is infinite, uh, then we can uh, calculate its, uh, we already know what its magnetic field should be. Magnetic field is going to be mu zero pi two pi r, uh, times i. Okay? And uh, its direction, the direction of the magnetic field is going to be given by the right hand rule. So if I put my thumb in direction of the current for this part, it's going to be into the, uh, into the plane of the blackboard. So we are going to have something like this uh, for the direction. It's stronger as you get closer to the wire. It uh, decreases as one over r as you move farther away from the wire. Now, if this was just moving uh, in a uniform magnetic field, we could easily calculate. Uh, we could easily calculate the force. And are they asking for the force? Uh, assuming they determine the EMF, they are asking for the EMF. So, uh, if this was just moving um, uh, in a uniform magnetic field, we could calculate the EMF uh, trivially. Right? Uh, this will be uh, easy. But uh, because this is not moving in a uniform field, uh, the formula that we, that we use for the EMF is not going to be. Uh, valid in general. So we have to divide this into little parts and apply the formula for the EMF for each little part. So let's say that I'm taking some little part like this. So because we already implicitly called this distance r, I can call this uh, dr and calculate the EMF over each part. And then all of these parts are going to be connected in series to each other. So I can just add up these EMF. So to say the total EMF I'm going to get is going to be some of these infinitesimal EMFs for these infinitesimal parts. So what is this uh, EMF? Well, that EMF normally is given by, of course, d phi magnetic by dt. And this is normally given by uh, this formula, right? So some length of the wire that's moving with some velocity in a magnetic field B, this will be the EMF. Now, in our case, this is an infinitesimal EMF. So this infinitesimal EMF is going to be induced on an infinitesimal part of this wire, right? And in our case, this is of course going to be just dr, right? So let's write this down. Uh, we are going to get p times v times dr, and this dr is uh, as, as I change this variable dr, I'm going to move from this part of this wire to that part of the wire. Uh, since I want to write this b uh, in a simple form, this r is measured from the uh, distance of uh, distance from the wire, so I'm also going to choose uh, this as my let's say r coordinate. Then I have to go from b to uh, a plus b. Okay. And now I can write this down. This b, uh, so from b to a plus b mu naught over two pi r. Uh, this V is some V. I don't know what it is, uh, but there's an I here. Uh, so this is V and then some dr. So this mu naught is a constant, I is a constant, V is a constant, 2 pi is a constant. I can take all of those out. I end up with the integral of 1 over r. That's the natural logarithm. I'm going to get uh, the difference of two natural logarithms, but difference of natural logarithms is the uh, natural logarithm of the ratio. So this is going to be mu zero i b over 2 pi, then the logarithm of a plus b to b. Okay. Now, what will be the direction of this EMF? 
Okay, so each part will be at a higher potential. Now you can do this uh, perhaps formally by using you know, cross products and so on and so forth, uh, but there's, there's an easy way uh, to think about this. Just imagine that this is just going down and we'll just, just see what happens to positive charges and negative charges. Okay, so as these are moving down, so these are going to feel a force uh, that is just given by the Lorentz force. So this is their velocity and uh, this is their <coughs> magnetic field, so they, they're going to feel a force. Positive charges are going to feel a force towards the wire. Okay, whereas negative charges are going to also feel the Lorentz force, but their force is going to be switched. This is what they all feel. So as this wire is going down, the positive charges are going to be pushed to the right, and the negative charges are being pushed to the left, and uh, they're going to end up with a larger EMF on this side than on that side. Now what happens if we revert the velocity, so for part B. Now all the arguments here, they remain the same, essentially. So uh, the numerical value of e EMF is going to be the same. Are we going to switch the, um, uh, the direction of the EMF? Yes, because now they are going this way, and the Lorentz force on the positive charges is going to be to the left, and the Lorentz force on the negative charges are going to be to the right, so we are going to have a larger EMF on the left-hand side and right-hand side. As I said, you can also do this more formally uh, by using some uh, formulas and so on and so forth, but I find it easiest to just look at what's happening to positive and negative charges. Okay. Okay.